Hello, this is D and I'm back with another video. Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to easily overclock your 7900 XTX, and this should also work for the XT variant. Now, a lot of people have a few misconceptions on the RDNA 3 architecture and how to overclock it. Now, I did see that J2Sense put out a video on Sunday, and then he had another video yesterday correcting some of his mistakes. Now, a lot of people don't actually know that you have to undervolt AMD cards in order to get the maximum performance out of it. Now, this was also the case with RDNA 2 cards. Now, today I'm just gonna show you how to easily get an overclock on your card. Now, first of all, for the guys out there that don't really wanna tinker with the cards and just want a quick undervolt or overclock, I would say just choose the preset that's here. Either undervolt your GPU to get a little bit better performance on the cooling, and if you're lucky and if you have a good silicon lottery, you'll probably get a little bit better clocks. You can also hit the overclock GPU button you would just go and do that and then hit proceed. And this would actually overclock your GPU by a, I would say maybe 50 to 60 megahertz, giving you better performance. Now it's not a big uptick in performance, but it is a quick and easy overclock. Now for the rest of you out there, you're gonna have to go to the custom tab over here. You're gonna open this up, you're gonna hit GPU tuning, you're gonna enable it, as well as the um, frequencies. You're gonna wanna enable that as well. Now we're gonna do that here. Now leave it at stock for now. Leave it at, I would say, take it down a hundred. Most users should be able to take it down a hundred millivolts. So we're gonna take it down to 150. You can alternatively type it in here just for a time, 1050. I'm gonna save, oops, I hit the trigger there, my mistake. We're gonna hit 1050, enter it. Uh, we're gonna go down here and open up the VRAM timing. Um, we're gonna enable this here. Now, most people should be able to hit 2600. So we're gonna put it to 2600. Um, we're gonna open the power tuning. We're gonna put this to plus 15. And that would give you a very easy overclock. Now, the way it works is that the frequency is maintained because the voltage is a little bit lower, so it's able to boost a little bit higher, maintaining better clocks. It's just the way it works with RDNA 3 GPUs. Now, we would hit apply, but I'm not gonna hit apply. Before that, I'm gonna leave everything at stock settings. I'm gonna do a port royal run so you can see the stock settings, and then I'm gonna overclock it, and you will see that the performance will be quite a bit of an uptick over stock. So our stock performance is about 14,000 plus. We're gonna try to undervolt this card now to get better performance. So we're gonna hit apply. And now we're gonna run our benchmarks and see if we get an increase in performance. We are hitting almost 16,000 points. It's a big uptick over the stock performance. So this is just an easy way that you can overclock your cars. Now I have a few metrics of my maximum overclock. So some of you will be able to get this uh, millivolts down a little bit further. Some of you might be able to get to 1025. Some of you may even be lucky enough to get it to 1000. Now once you get it in there and you see the clocks that it's boosting to, so say it's going up to like 2900 or 2950, you're gonna wanna kind of lock it in there. So what you would do is you take this slider here, what we're gonna just type it in just for the interest of time. So we're gonna type in 2800 to 2940. 
we would hit apply and it would try to lock your clocks in between 2800 and 2940. So it would go up towards the higher end of this and it would go past 2800. You wouldn't really see it go lower. Now you might get some crashes and if you do get some crashes, then try to decrease the minimum and maximum clocks. Play around with it until you get the perfect settings for your GPU that makes all of your games run stable with high FPS. Now with my experience, once you start going past three gigahertz or 3000 megahertz, I notice that the performance drops off and then you do get that effect where it's kind of stretching the clocks and you're getting really poor performance. So do watch that. If it happens, then you know you gotta dial back your clocks. Now that's basically it. I'm gonna put up some charts of my maximum overclock that I achieved over my stock settings. As you can see in Forza, we have a good uptick in performance. The Callisto Protocol, a pretty good uptick in performance as well as Cyberpunk 2077. So I'm pretty happy with my card's performance it's hitting almost three gigahertz now I feel with the reference cards you're kind of limited by the heating that you have on that card it has a smaller cooler compared to the third-party cards that you can find out there from like Asus and Sapphire these cards are producing much better thermals they have much bigger coolers on them they're using actually some of the 3090 coolers well the same size cooler on these GPUs and it's giving you much better thermals it's giving you a higher performance as well those cards accept more power they have three eight pin connectors on them. So you're gonna get better performance on those cards. But for the reference card, I am impressed with the performance I'm getting. Now, who is this card really for? This is for someone that likes to play their games at 4K and doesn't really care about ray tracing. If that is you, this card is an excellent performer. Now, if you do want ray tracing, this card is capable of doing it at 4K, but a lot of games, it kind of struggles with it, even with FSR on. So I wouldn't really recommend this card if you're targeting 4K with ray tracing. However, if you do bump down the resolution to 1440p, it does make a fantastic ray tracing card. Now with ray tracing performance, I would say it's around a 3090 Ti, maybe a little bit above depending on the game. So don't expect amazing ray tracing performance performance out of this card running it at 4k but 1440p it is a viable option anyways let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below if you have any questions on how to undervolt your cards just shoot me a message i'll try to answer as many of them as i can i will say that a good target point is maybe starting with a 130 millivolt undervolt put your clocks at 2800 to 2700 and see if that is stable in games now if it's stable try to bring it up a little bit further until it crashes once it crashes you know you have to bring it back and dial it in until you have no more further crashes in games anyways i hope this was helpful for some of you guys out there please like the video subscribe and like i usually say i'll see you guys on the next one